last four years, the campus of Brigham Young University has been a place that we call home. A place we've learned, a place we've studied, a place we've been tested. A place that everyone says we're supposed to be. I'm Landon. And I'm Sabrina. We're both about to graduate with our bachelor's degrees in broadcast journalism. But as we look past graduation, we've wondered, did we do the right thing? Is it necessary in today's economy to go to college? Many in our generation have been raised to believe that college is not only the next step, but a necessary step in order to have a successful career. We wanted to see if that's really true. So we reached out to the Utah governor's office and found out that the push for everyone to go to college has had some unexpected consequences. Over the last 40 years or so, Americans have kind of thought to themselves, if my child doesn't go on to college and get a degree, I failed as a parent. And so consequently, I think the trades and some of the technical jobs, technical skills out there have suffered. To many in a generation of young people who have never had to wait for nearly anything, spending four plus years in college and decades climbing the workplace ladder isn't appealing. I admit that there is uh, really an interesting attitude among some of the younger people that I work with. You know, they, they do want that promotion right now. They don't want to work their way up and take 20 years to get there. They want it now. This desire for immediate success has motivated many to forego the college experience. So we found people our own age living their dreams without a college degree. From outfitting brides, writing code, to making hammocks, we want to show you three different stories of success. Our goal is not to tell you you shouldn't go to college, but to help you find the right education for you. Michael Whiteley. I started Bear Butts uh, November 2015 with my wife Sammy. When I started we were just trying to become the largest hammock company in the world. Our process was that we're going to be half the cost of the other guys and give you better quality material and market to you a lot better. A marketing strategy he didn't learn in the classroom. After two years of taking classes he felt college didn't fit with his life purpose. The sole reason that I was going to college is because I was supposed to. My parents wanted me to, I needed that piece of paper, I was going in for a psychology degree, I had no idea why, I like psychology, um, but I, what I realized was that it had no, nothing to do at all with what I was supposed to do in my life. Uh, eventually my fiance told me you should drop out of college because it also didn't help with my mission, so I made the really hard decision for me personally at the time of dropping out of college. We got married and then we had a baby and everything hit the wall. I here I was, newly married, college dropout with no job, and I was a bona fide loser in the world. And so that's when I started trying to figure things out, just making moves. That's when Michael made a bold decision. I started my first company called Suds of Beauty, and I literally sold this one pound bar of soap that was black and smelly, um, and everyone made fun of me. I told my wife I found this course online that taught me how to sell products on Amazon. Um, and the course cost $5,000 and we didn't have $5,000 so I put it on a credit card and that course taught me how to sell the soap. And so when I was selling the soap, we were selling 30 to 50 a day of these bars of soaps and we were making money. And I eventually I was like, okay honey, I'm kind of bored with this. Like I got this down, let's try to make a really big brand and a really big company so that we can make a big impact on people's lives inside the company and hopefully on the outside of the, to the world. Now, Bear Butt sells a variety of outdoor goods like backpacks, sleeping bags, and jackets. They make all of their products in this warehouse in Provo. Out of all the people Michael has hired, he says a college education is not a factor he looks for. I uh, don't care about college degrees at all. Actually, like I couldn't tell you if anyone in my business has a college degree. Um, I never look at them, never care. I went through two years of college and I just memorized stuff and threw it up on a test. You know, I didn't really gain anything out of it. So. Yeah, I don't think much of it. This is our marketing team that we have. People have like marketing degrees and they come in to work for us. I tell them to forget everything they learned in their marketing class and if they start using it here, I'm gonna be very mad. It's just very outdated and it's just old school. It's always like five to 10 years behind. It's just constantly adjusting. So you have to be continuously studying marketing to know how to do it. Like it changes on the daily. Honestly, it changes on the daily. So a school can never teach you that. Looking back, Michael can see that his path to success didn't require general education courses or learning at the feet of a professor with a PhD, but the ability to work hard, adapt quickly, and just do it. I get asked all the time, because you know, I kind of promote this stuff on my social media. I don't have a big following or anything, but I promote it and people follow me and they ask like, how do I start, how do I start? What's my purpose, how do I start? And I, 
the answer is just do it. Like you pretty much know how to start. Usually it's usually with people I talk to, it's I don't want to be in college. I'm supposed to be there though, quote unquote, and I don't know what to do. And I just tell them just do it. Just start doing it. And whatever that it is, I don't know the answer to it, but I know you're supposed to just do it. For me, I thought I, I knew I wasn't supposed to get a job, and that meant I couldn't get an apartment. And that and I dropped out of college and that meant I couldn't live with my parents. So my wife and I were literally ready to live in our car in the church parking lot. I had the password to the church and we were gonna take showers in the church. So we were dead set, like it was the night before, that's where we were gonna sleep. Like we were dead set on it and we were just doing it. It was extremely hard. Eventually we found the apartment and it was nice. But I think that's the dedication it really takes. People just have to do it. So drop out, get cussed out by your parents. Your parents are gonna hate you. My parents hated, not hated me. They, they were disappointed with me for two years until they saw one of my products in use someone else in California was using it and they were like wow he's actually selling stuff and making an impact I say to people shut up and do it stop asking me just do it Michael's mentality is similar to another entrepreneur we talked with pretty much everything I've learned in life is just from doing things my name is Tiffany Pritchett and I am the owner and founder of Prichet Bridal I've always been interested in hair and makeup that was like what I wanted to do when I got older. I came up with the dream to have a bridal store that specialized in hair and makeup as well. So we would have dresses on one side and the salon on the other, but I never really thought it would happen. I just thought like, how cool would that be? When I was in high school, I took the easiest classes you could take, um, but I actually kept in mind this dream. So like I took fashion class, literally the easiest class you can take. I took sewing, did not take a single AP class because I was like, I'm going to hair school and I just have different dreams. <gasps> we do. She needs to try this on. So I got a 19 on the ACT and my dad was like, you better take the ACT again. And I was like, no dad, I'm not going to college. I'm not taking the ACT again. And he was actually kind of like, why? Like, are you going to hair school because you're too lazy to go to college? But he did want me to be able to like have the opportunity to go to college if one day that was something I wanted. And in my mind, I was kind of like, a 19 will get me into UVU and we'll just make it work if that's what I end up deciding to do one day. Um, so I just was like, let me do my plan and then we can see where we go from there. A lot of people went to hair school after they finished college because that was what they actually wanted to do and their parents wouldn't let them. So I went to hair school, loved it. Got a lot, a lot of education in exactly the places that I needed. Most of what I needed was like the art side of things, which is something that just comes more natural rather than something that can be taught. If you don't have a natural eye for it, then you just don't. After hair school, I worked in a salon for a while, decided that I just didn't feel like that I was in the right thing. So I was like, maybe hair and makeup isn't my thing. So I quit went to, and worked for a mortgage company and I was like, okay, just kidding, I miss hair. So I built a salon in my house. I was doing hair from home and I still felt like there was like more for me, but I just didn't really know what it was. Not long after, Tiffany learned from one of her clients that a local bridal store was for sale. With the encouragement of her husband and the backing of an investor, she bought the store. She says that to be successful, the diverse education and experience of those around her were key. We had the skeleton that we knew that we had to fill in eventually when we started here, and I feel like the experiences that we've had here have helped us learn so much, but we wouldn't have been able to start without my husband's knowledge from all of his business classes and from my mom's knowledge from just her experience of life. Their education and my education combined is kind of what's made everything possible, I would say. Thinking that I'm successful is not something that I think to myself. It makes me feel really uncomfortable, to be honest with you. In the year, like a little over a year that we've been doing this, I was featured in Utah Valley Business Magazine as one of the top 10 entrepreneurs for Utah, which was like such an honor. When they called me and asked me to do that, I was like, are you sure you want me? Because I don't think you do. But I think it's a little shocking to people my age, along with what I'm doing. If I wouldn't have married my husband, none of this would have happened. If I wouldn't have gotten married when I did, none of this would have happened. If I wouldn't have gone to hair school, none of this would have happened. If I would have been in college, then I wouldn't have done this. I'm absolutely living my dream without my college degree. Like, no question. I, w I like, not even for a second do I regret not going to college. I feel like that's not something that I needed at all. I get to do what I love every single day. She looks great in that one, which like, literally what more can you ask? Stories of success like Michael's and Tiffany's make it easy to question if college is the wrong choice. Did we need to spend all that money and take all that time when we could have started working right out of high school?
A recent study showed there are roughly 30 million jobs in the U.S. that pay an average of $55,000 per year and don't require a bachelor's degree. Considering research has shown an increase of college graduates working in non-graduate jobs, many wonder if the expense of college is worth it. But Val Hill says that even for jobs that don't require such training, a degree can help you stand out, especially when the economy isn't doing well. In a full employment economy like we've had the last few years, uh, a lot of employers aren't really so concerned about the diploma and the degree as they are the skill set that young people have when they come out. And so I would say when unemployment is down around 3%, uh, a college diploma is probably not as valuable as it would be in an in a 8% unemployment economy. The knowledge is critical, but showing me that you've gone through, you've gotten your degree, you paid the price is, is really important. And there's some people who just can't do that or they won't do it. They're not going to sacrifice to that extent. And so hopefully they can find another job and you know, get, in, get in a good high paying job without a college degree, even though it's, it's infinitely harder than if you have that diploma. But Hale still admits that there is growing acceptance of and options for alternative systems of education. I think you're seeing more and more jobs that are available to associate's degrees, people who do two-year degrees, or even people who do certificates. And we've seen a pro proliferation of these coding academies and things, these coding schools for people who learn to code and in six months time or something and then they get a job. That's what students at Dev Mountain receive when they finish the school's coding boot camp. We got to update those instructions. It's a three-month hands-on training that teaches students apps and websites from the ground up. It costs about $10,000 for the three-month course and that includes housing. They graduate with a certificate and qualifications for a well-paying job. Our students can hope on the low end to make at least four times what they paid in tuition. On the higher end some students uh, could possibly get closer to five to six times. Students who do go through financing, the, the higher end terms are three years, so all of our students who are actually just following the payment schedule are, are student loans paid off within three years of graduation. And their success isn't entirely fiscal. Dev Mountain prides itself on the success they've seen in their unique teaching style. We've done a lot of reading and research on brain and learning science, how to help people actually remember things and learn them. And a big part of that is actually doing it. Most people learn a lot better by doing something than by having someone explain something to them. Oftentimes, people that graduate from college, they don't necessarily have the skills they need to perform their job. They may have theoretical knowledge, but they don't have a real world experience. And so that's what we provide is we don't teach them theory. We just say, go build things. Like, these are problems you're going to run into. I didn't graduate from college. I started to look for alternative ways to get into coding, and I just heard about these boot camps that were starting up, that they did nothing but teach you code all day. And so the idea of just learning what's important to your profession and doing nothing else just made sense to me. I was getting a degree in biology. The dots have to be blue, which is good. I didn't know really what I wanted to do or if my degree was gonna get me anywhere. When I was growing up in like middle school, high school, they really pounded that into you that like you have to go to college and you have to get good grades or you won't go to college or like you'll be stuck working at McDonald's the rest of your life, you know, stuff like that. I was glad I had a college experience. It would have been nice to know this like a little bit earlier. I wouldn't, you know, say to my friends like you're doing it wrong or anything because um, that's just their path. I don't think that one's necessarily better than the other. If I can go and finish this and get a job like right out of the bat, I feel that there's no need to go back to college and get a degree. I got relatively close to a degree, and that's something that I still plan to go back to finish off. Um, I still see that there's a lot of value in saying that I have a degree in, for me it would be information systems, like there's value in saying that. Like people pay more for people with degrees, and unfortunately that seems to be a truth that you can't fully escape. I'm 51 years old. Uh, I'm the oldest guy here. I went to college, got a bachelor's in marketing, uh, went on to business school, and after that spent several years uh, doing the consulting route, which was really the, the passion I had back then. I started to look online at online courses and then discovered that they had boot camps. Doing some research, Dev Mountain kept coming up as uh, the right fit for me. I think it's getting tougher and tougher to justify the cost of college. And I can say that because I'm sending two kids to college right now. 
and it's extremely expensive. My daughter's the first to go to college uh, and she received actually about 16,000 in scholarships. Her tuition now is about $25,000 a year. Here at Dev Mountain, I paid approximately 11,000, 10 to 11,000 for a three month experience. And you know, we're going to, for very different reasons. Um, you know, I came here because I really do want to come out of here with very specific skills to be able to pursue uh, my passions. And my daughter is in a different you know, stage of her life and uh, you know, needs a, looking for a different kind of experience. I have doubts whether the education piece of it is going to justify the cost. So with that opinion, why send your kids to college? Because it's what everybody is doing. And um, they, the, the, the other side actually that is really good about college too is you're at a stage of life that you, you need to mature, you need to start identifying who you are and what you want to be. And I think those four years at college can play a really good role uh, in that kind of experience, developing lifelong friendships and helping you find out who you are and where you want to go. Many people we talked to felt their parents pushed them towards college because they saw it as a safe route. I think parents love us. I think that's what it is. Parents love you and failure is scary for people. And so your parents lovingly hold you back. And they know that they've been told that college is the way to be successful. And so that's what they want you to do because they love you and they don't want you to fail. And anytime you do something that you're truly passionate about, in my, my belief, it's usually pretty scary and I believe it's actually harder. But in the long run, it's a lot more rewarding, a lot more fulfilling. I wouldn't say that they were worried because they know me and they knew that I would figure it out and that I'd be successful in whatever I decided to do. Just because I'm a driven person in general, that's just kind of who I am. They always thought it's great if I do want to get my degree, but if I wanted to go to a trade school, that would also be 100% fine. My grandma and grandpa were just convinced you need a college degree if you're going to be successful in a professional environment. But I think that's a big difference in our generation is we're finding that we're interested in skill. We're interested in can you do what you need to do to make money or make your job happen. I 100% think the college system is broken. It's teaching us how to memorize things. Um, it's very outdated. Um, and the right or wrong system is also very wrong. Like, hey, you, it's C, not D. I think that's very wrong. We're taught not to fail, but really, failing is what it's all about. Failure is one of the best ways to learn. If you do something right, what's your brain going to remember? How's it going to change? How's it going to grow? It doesn't work that way. And so by encouraging our students to try and fail and try and fail and learn from that, it's not only necessary to work as a developer, because that's what development is. It is trial and failure all day, every day. We're not bridge engineers where we get it right the first time or the bridge falls down. No, the bridge collapses a hundred times while we're building it. And then we finally shake it and it doesn't fall anymore. And that's how we know it worked. Every time we write a line of code, it doesn't work. Some people see that as a failure but we push them to be like, no, this just means that you made a mistake and we're gonna fix it, we're gonna get better. And so it's literally all we deal with all day is just broken things. So we encourage students from day one, embrace failure, learn from failure, make 10,000 mistakes because it's not then until you're an expert. If you're avoiding mistakes, you're avoiding becoming an expert. Some of the big, biggest successes I've had so far are the failures. A lot of times they just see, oh, we're doing a bunch of sales and my products all over the place and we have a strong social media presence. But what they don't understand is behind the scenes we have massive amounts of struggles because um, I, I believe I am very good at being an entrepreneur, but I know for a fact I am terrible in experience because I have zero. And so my experience is only two years. And so that just means I've made a ton of mistakes because I don't know how to do it, but I had the mentality to do it. College and school teaches us to stop failing, which is really bad. We should just be failing our whole lives. Once you start failing, it gets easier and easier because you realize you're just failing forward and you're getting better as a person. Not every kid wants to go to college. Not every kid should go to college. A lot of them aren't prepared for it. They don't want to do it. And we need to identify those kids right away so we can get them into some of these programs that will lead to great careers. If I would do, do it over right now, I would give it serious consideration to finding something I'm passionate about, finding the right online curriculum or some kind of boot camp or concentrated education experience to get the skills that would allow me then to pursue that passion. I just hope to inspire my kids to just do what they want to do, whether it's go to college and become a doctor or to do anything else. I just want to encourage them to live what they feel like they should inside their, inside their hearts. And I think we as a culture are slowly going to get better and better at that. 
and then we have to motivate ourselves to actually do it because that's when it's hard. The single most important thing that I look for from my kids or anybody would be, you know, do you ha have an idea of what you really do want to pursue? And if either of my kids said, hey dad, I want to be a hairdresser, I want to be a car mechanic, I guarantee you my wife and I would both totally support sitting into a trade school, an online school, whatever you know, education path would give them the skills they need to actually pursue that career. I don't feel like boot camps are the one size fit all for every education thing, right? Doctors should definitely still go to school, please. You know, uh, lawyers, people who build bridges, right? Go make sure you get that right the first time. There should be options though, uh, especially with the rising generation with the amount of knowledge on the internet. Uh, we need to stop selling the message that uh, you're only as good as a grade tells you in school. You're only as good as the diploma or the degree that you're given. To achieve the American dream, you don't have to go to college. You can easily find a trade, become good at it, and make a good living uh, doing the thing you really love to do. These stories show that going to college is probably not the right path for everyone. But for us studying journalism here at BYU, we feel we've made the right choice. We spent hours here in our college newsroom writing, editing, producing, reporting, and anchoring on live TV. Welcome to 11 News at Noon. I'm Landon Moore. And I'm Sabrina Riley. We take our news stories and put together demo reels, which we're using to find jobs in our industry, something we couldn't have done right out of high school. Could we have learned what we've learned in some other way? Maybe. But we view our time at BYU as invaluable, not only for the education, but also for the experiences. We've made lifelong friends, been mentored by professionals, and learned from our mistakes along the way. We can't tell you what path you should be on, but these stories show that learning in whatever form is critical for success. So as you decide what your path will be, we hope you've been inspired to get the right education for you.